Good morning, everybody. This is a live emergency briefing as we have another tornado outbreak expected today across central and eastern Pennsylvania. Uh, this is with uh, post-tropical cyclone Fred that caused all kinds of problems out here uh, in upstate South Carolina, North Carolina, and the southern Appalachians. Historic flooding out there across the rivers, including a flash flood emergency in uh, the Canton, North Carolina area. Today, this is the hot spot here for this tornado outbreak anywhere east and to the northeast of the center of uh, post-tropical cyclone Fred. And that's going to bring some more flooding rainfall as well, uh, especially to the Appalachians there, the southern and the eastern uh, facing slopes of the central Appalachians into Pennsylvania as well could have some big problems. And uh, yesterday, Fred uh, created some big problems as well uh, out there across the southern Appalachians, big time flooding as well. Here you can see uh, the flash flood. Uh, intercepted out there in Balsam Grove. This is in Pisgah National Forest. Uh, double digit rainfall totals up in the uh, Appalachians up above town, up in Balsam Grove. And uh, this is in Pisgah National Forest, named after the balsam trees that exist above 5,000 feet up there in the higher terrain. 10 to 12 inches of rainfall happened, maybe even more than that over the higher terrain, at least uh, as what we were able to estimate by uh, using those rain uh, gauges, and all of that water had to flow downstream. Looks like uh, half of that flash flood wave came down this side of the higher terrain, and the rest of that flash flood wave went north down the Pigeon River, and uh, that led to a flash flood emergency for Canton, North Carolina, including Interstate uh, 40. Uh, there to the west of Asheville, uh, leading to evacuations of the Canton area as well. That flash flood wave continued to travel north uh, down the uh, Pigeon River, uh, eventually before reaching its terminus in the lake there. Uh, but the water actually went up above 19 feet uh, near the Canton area. Uh, it did break a record, at least according to the one gauge uh, there in Canton, uh, that measured it in excess of 16 feet at that gauge. Definitely set a new record. Look at all that water. There is a vehicle with the nose sticking in those flood waters on the other side of the North Fork French Broad River there. And a lot of the firefighters in Balsam Grove were blocking down the road and bringing their rafts out there. And they just couldn't reach the vehicle. Uh, they decided uh, that they couldn't reach it out there. I uh, suggested, hey, you could, I could use my drone and fly it around the vehicle. And they said, we have drones, we just can't fly them. The rain was just coming down a little too heavy, I think. I was willing to fly my drone. Uh, in the rain. I've definitely sh uh, shown that those drones can fly in driving rain, even around the tornado there. But it looked like they oh, had oh, uh, climbed to safety, even though the lights were on on the back oh, end of that vehicle. It looked like they were able to uh, climb to safety before uh, the river was able to rise. One thing with these rivers out of the eastern U.S. is that it does take a little bit of time for them to rise. It usually happens over about an hour or so. Uh, instead of a big massive wave of debris, trees, logs, and everything at the leading edge of that debris plug, usually they're a little bit more of a uh, of a gradual rise. So here are those uh, storm reports from yesterday with uh, 13 tornadoes. Uh, most of those are relatively weaker tornadoes across upstate South Carolina, northeastern Georgia. Though that one caused quite a bit of damage near Homer. Uh, that was actually the first tornado warning of the day just as I was closing in on that storm. I took a red eye flight out here to my mom's place just to get here in time to cover this event. And I wasn't joking when I told you I would peel off a tornado warning to intercept a big time flash flood. I, I easily could have gone down here and intercepted these tornadoes near the Greenville area, but I saw that big rainfall max, uh, 10 to 12 inches in the mountains there up above Balsam Grove and above Pisgah National Forest. So I decided to peel off the tornado warnings there are kind of bird fart tornadoes out there little supercell storms and i decided to cover the raging flash flood uh, in the appalachian mountains and then my mom's place uh, was under a bunch of tornado warnings here from these storms uh that uh, most of the confirmed tornadoes that were well off to the southeast uh, of her location uh, here and a couple other tornadoes down closer to the columbia area and these were confirmed as well across western north carolina so i do expect more of the same today uh this time though uh, it'll be across eastern Pennsylvania. There you can see the center of post-tropical cyclone Fred still lifting off to the northeast. Tropical storm Grace is still organizing in the Caribbean. It's heading to the south of Cancun now, probably a little closer to Tulum. Right now it looks like max sustained winds of 85 miles an hour expected at landfall late tonight. Just wasn't quite strong enough for me to pull the trigger and head down to the Cancun area. But you never know with those tropical cyclones. 
certainly could intensify uh, on approach to the Yucatan, but I definitely am getting some Delta vibes from that Hurricane Delta last year that came in as a Category 1. Uh, but last year was also supposed to be a Category 4 hurricane when it came in and ended up being a Category 1 type storm. And there's also severe weather potential tomorrow in eastern Colorado on Thursday. Looks like a decent uh, severe weather setup. And then in southeastern South Dakota, eastern Nebraska on Friday. Also looks pretty active. So here is a forecast for 21Z this afternoon. We can go a little bit earlier. Basically, it shows anywhere to the east of this low-level center, big low-level jet of 30 to 50 knots out here, and it becomes more backed in the northern Pennsylvania, a little bit more veered, but uh, potential for more easterly storm motions out there across southern Pennsylvania. And uh, you can certainly see the storm relative helicity also is uh, quite strong there beneath that 30 to 40 knot low-level jet. Not quite as strong as we had yesterday, uh, but there is a little bit more dry air coming in aloft, a little bit more instability across southern Pennsylvania. But you can see that the greater storm relative helicity is up across northern Pennsylvania, where you get a more backed low-level low level jet, uh, more backed surface winds as well up across northern uh, Pennsylvania uh, there as well. So even though the risk does include central southeastern Pennsylvania, don't rule out the threat of uh, a lot of tornadoes, too, across northern Pennsylvania and even into western New York up there because that's where the greatest low-level shear is located, western New York, north-central Pennsylvania up there. So you certainly could get a tornado up there, too, and plenty of surface-based instability available. At 21Z, you start getting some decent cape here in uh, south-central Pennsylvania. By 22Z, continues to increase, but still you have that greater storm relative helicity across northern Pennsylvania, but then it starts to ramp up a little bit later here across central and southern PA as well. And you can kind of see the overlap of instability in that wind shear is greatest across central and southern Pennsylvania, but north central PA into western New York. Do not count that area out. There's a lot of storm relative helicity up there. And even though you don't have as much of a pronounced mid-level dry slot or EML that you get on the southern edge of that low-level center that does overspread uh, southeastern Pennsylvania, creating quite a favorable setup for tornadoes. Looking at the soundings, look at that veering, changing wind speed and direction with height. You do have a subtle elevated mix layer here, just a little bit of drying to squeeze out some cape and get a little bit of surface heating as well. But that is a textbook tornado producer sounding, north-northeasterly movers for the right mover there at about 20 knots. A lot of easterlies in the lowest kilometer or two out there, uh, but that's creating a textbook photograph for even a strong tornado or two later on today. Wind shear is important, that's for sure, and we got lots of it. There you can see the uh, changing wind direction with height in the low levels of the atmosphere, east southeasterly up to southerly just above the ground, flipping around to southwesterly as well. I almost went up there to chase this. Uh, but I'm going to be flying back to the High Plains tomorrow to chase Thursday and Friday. My mom and I are heading out to Whitewater Falls today to try to view some of that big-time water flow that's going to be happening off the southern Appalachians. Should be continuing to happen. Those waterfalls definitely very full. And look at all this convection by 22Z. This is going to be a monster supercell down there to the west of Harrisburg a ways, south-central Pennsylvania. Supercell is even in AccuWeather headquarters up near State College area. Some embedded convection, not as much surface based instability, a little bit more of congealing storms, more of kind of a tropical rain type of an event across northern PA into western New York. But there's a lot of low level wind shear up there to make even those embedded storms spin. And there's already a mesoscale discussion, so I do expect a tornado watch out shortly. This is around midday, right about now. An arc of storms is expected to initiate southwestern Pennsylvania, about 18Z, and that's just going to cruise across the southern portion of the state. It's definitely going to be a supercellular mode with that arc emanating from basically a strong surface low out here, getting embedded within a little bit of some modest uh, mid and upper level flow as well. And look at that convection moving through southern Pennsylvania there. Even kind of an effective warm front sets up across northern PA. It towards 7 p.m. Still have supercell storms here hanging on across southern Pennsylvania. Big time rain event, flooding rains happening here uh, in the central Appalachians. 
And you're going to be continuing even up to sunset and after sunset with that tornado warning potential, similar to what we had yesterday. With these tropical soundings, you don't get a lot of loss or, or rapid cooling of the near ground temperature after dark. And uh, definitely do have some very nice convection moving into southeastern PA here. And even back building into eastern Maryland, it's more of a conditional threat down Maryland into northern Virginia, but you could even get uh, some maturation of some supercells down there, even into the northern Delmarva. So that's at about 9 p.m., 8, 9 p.m. Floodings, uh, big flash flood emergencies are likely going to be the story here, especially across the mountains of north central PA with this fire hose set up. And then we finally start to lose a little bit of that surface base instability and get kind of more of an MCS type of an event. So let's take a look at some of the accumulated rainfall expected here. Not as much as we had yesterday, but still five to six inches, uh, especially on those southern uh, facing ridges here in the Appalachians could get a lot more than what some of the models are able to resolve. So I think that it, there's not going to be as much of a flash flood threat as we had yesterday across the southern Appalachians with those 10 to 12 inch rainfall totals out there swelling up the creeks, creating all kinds of chaos and flash flooding, but definitely flash flood watches out here as well across central PA into western New York. So we do have an MD out already, Tornado Watch coming soon, and they extend that Tornado Watch all the way down into northeastern Virginia, wherever you get these back surface winds. Almost like a little bit of a wind shift here, not a dry line because the dew points don't drop off that much back behind it, and it's really humid down here in the southern Appalachians. But you do have a bit of an effective warm front where to the south of it breaks in the clouds are bringing those temperatures into the upper 70s. That warm frontal zone should lift central, maybe northern PA. But a lot of wind shear to the north of it as well, even up into western New York. So there is the uh, center of post-tropical cyclone Fred down to sub-1015. There's your wind shear pipe organizing across southwestern PA. A little bit of low clouds there still. They start to clear out to the south of that, though, where you get just a little bit of a subtle elevated mix layer down there. And then that wind shear by about 18Z, by about 1, 2 p.m., starts to settle in across south-central Pennsylvania. And that's when those supercells are going to erupt well to the west of Harrisburg. And just watch that little 200 plus blob of zero to one kilometer shear lift off to the northeast and we'll also look at the uh, instability the surface base instability is certainly building up into southeastern pa already in excess of 2000 cape there look at that cape funnel in from the southeast 2000 plus instability so even more instability today than was available for the storms yesterday but it certainly did come together quickly yesterday Look at these bands of supercells that are going to form. Not as much cape, though, across western New York and north central Pennsylvania. That cape drops to about a, a sub 1,000 joules per kilogram up there, north central PA, western New York. More easterlies, even some east, east northeasterlies up there, enhancing that 0 to 1 kilometer SRH, but probably just not enough low level instability out there across western New York and north central PA to realize that tornado threat. But there is a slight risk out there. Storm Prediction Center might be upgraded to enhan an enhanced risk, similar to what happened yesterday. Not much is gained, really, by keeping a slight risk out here. I think there's going to be plenty of tornadoes, especially in the northern edge of that slight risk across central and eastern Pennsylvania there. So this is my target area. I'm going to be heading back to Colorado tomorrow to uh, chase eastern Colorado and uh, maybe southeastern South Dakota, eastern Nebraska as well on Friday could certainly be an issue as well. So tornado watch expected shortly and I probably should have expanded that uh, risk area, the red area, back into southwestern Pennsylvania there. I have it just a little bit too far east. Should have had it a little bit further west back in this area as well. 
because I think that these storms are going to develop initially in kind of an arc shaped like that, and then that arc is just going to push east into the prime target area there. We probably should have extended that tornado outbreak zone as well into north central Pennsylvania, just because of the magnitude of the zero, zero to one kilometer storm relative. Felicity up there is so extreme, even though you're not going to get quite the surface base instability. Still think there's likely going to be some tornado warnings up there as well. So thank you everybody for tuning in to my morning, morning weather report. I look forward uh, to our Q&A coming up for Facebook supporters only on Sunday. And um, the big winner from our last Q&A who's going to win uh, a t-shirt is Kat Turner. So congratulations for asking uh, so many questions and encouraging uh, class interaction uh, during our last Q&A on Sunday. I'm going to need to get your address and I'll be sending you a shirt here pretty soon but thank you so much coming up this sunday looking forward to another q a and it can be educational type q a's as well we can discuss all things meteorology forecasts we'll do a little bit of weather briefings as well so thank you everybody my mom and i are going to get ready to head over to whitewater falls and i'll be monitoring the tornado situation across central and eastern pennsylvania never stop chasing <laughs>